I've been a user of their application for a few months now. All I can say about this app, it is very addictive and I love the user experience. I believe it's a spot on. The more I use this application, the more I fall in love with it. To an extent that I switch completely from Evernote and partially from Obsidian to this app. Believe me, I always find an excuse to write something. It's either on mobile or the Mac version. I created another video explaining my rationals why I switched to Bear among many other players, which I've placed a link on the description which you can watch later. It is important to know that I am not in any way affiliate or linked with Bear application or their team, and this is not a paid promo, I'm just a user. Hi, if you're new here, it's a bit about me. I'm Ben, an experienced software engineer. My whole life, including work and personal, involves in creating and using software. And in this channel, I'll go a little bit deeper than basics to help you tackle your problems using the best possible tools. This is going to be a series of tutorial, starting from Mac and then iOS and iPadOS. In this series, I am going to explain the features of the Bear application and how to get the maximum out of it and use all the potentials of this application. All right, let's begin. Uh, let's open the Bear application. And the first thing I want you to know how I broke down this tutorial specifically. I'm going to explain the environment, interface and navigation, the data management, how you basically manage your data, backup, restore, import, export and web capture, operation on notes, it's what Bear is capable of doing, and organization, how you can organize in this application. And ultimately shortcuts and markdown because the concept of the Bear is to stay away from menus and clicks and completely use your keyboard to take notes. Everything is pro provided to you via short keys and also markdown features. Let's begin. So first thing is the interface. The interface is quite clean. On the left hand side you have all your tags and the way you organize your notes and everything. Here you can see a list of notes based on what you filter on the left hand side. Here you have search, create new and also here you can filter based on different categories. And then here you have navigation and also some basic functionality of the notes. This is your statistics. And here you have a tiny menu of your basic functionality you can apply to a note. If you want to enter the Zen mode, you will press Command N, create a new note, and then Control 1. And you can see that you have a clean slate just to jot down your ideas without any distraction. So here is your title and then you can write down your text. So as you can see, the interface and environment doesn't require much of explanation because the way it was designed to be as minimalistic as possible. Next is data management. All right, let's start with import notes. Here is their supported extensions. It's basically covering a lot of the standard extensions on the market. Beside that, uh, you can import from different applications. I, I personally tried Evernote and Obsidian and it was flawless with attachment, with links, with literally everything that the note has on it. I didn't see any messed up. I didn't see any after import corrections. Uh, but yeah, if anything, I'll put it down in the description. Uh, you can try others. I believe Markdown works as well very well. So if you have another application which you can export in Markdown format, then you can put them all in a, in a folder and here import it from that folder. Export notes again, uh, you got supported extensions as these. These are quite thorough. In order to backup your data, you can click on file backup and then uh, choose your destination and export it. Once it is finished, it will create a file with the extension bare to back and everything you have literally everything in your database will be exported into that file. You can completely delete everything here and re-import re that file, restore it from backup, and then you will have everything as it is right here. In order to capture and scrap data from web, you need to install this extension called Bear from, uh, get it from Safari extensions. And then once you click on it on any web page, it scraps the entire data for you. I think it doesn't scrap the videos, which is sensible because 
videos are not stored on their server is a link. So if I press on this icon, then as you can see, everything is scrapped. Uh, I have all the links, I have images, and I think it should also capture the GIFs as well. So, yep, as you can see, the GIFs are also uh, captured nicely. This is going to be very useful, for example, if you want to capture an article or something that you want to read later and you don't want to lose it, and that is, that's it, you, you can make it yours. So let's now touch on the note operations. Enter in Zen mode, as, on, as I said, uh, Command N, then Control 1, 2, 3. You can collapse these panels here. Beside that, Bear has the ability to pin a note on top of your list. So if you right click here, pin on top, then we'll go on top. This is also useful per category. For example, if I have something in my articles which I want to pin it on top, then I can do so. And I can only see this on top of my articles. And if I go back to notes, all notes, I would see both of them. I can lock each individual note as well. So if I, for example, select this note, right click, privacy and add password, it should lock this note for me. However, it's gonna throw an error because this note got an attachment. So you can't lock the notes with attachments. If it's a pure note, for example, this one, I can do so by adding a password. Here I can enter my own password or I can use my biometrics, which is stored in my Mac. Uh, I'm gonna use my biometrics. So this should now lock the note. And if I go here into my lock folder, the note is here. If I click on it, I should be able to see the content because I just provided my biometric information. But if I completely quit this application, reopen it, then this is locked now. Unless I provide my biometric again, I should not be able to see the content. If you check here, you got a to-do section as well. To-do will capture any to-do that you put on your notes from anywhere. So if I, for example, create a to-do here and say to-do one, then this will be captured in to-do uh, section, as you can see, just because it has one to-do on it, everything, every note that has a to-do on it will be shown here. Then we have this untagged, which is very important. The way I see this untagged is the concept of an inbox. For example, you're on your mobile, you're on your Mac, you want to quickly dump information into your bare application and decide where to put them later. Treat this untagged as an inbox. So, I created a note like note one, and I'm indecisive about it because I was on the go. I just captured this note. And later I want to uh, give it a category. For example, this is a, an article for me. As fast as I put it here, then it will disappear and it will show up under my articles. All right, how organization works in Bear application? I would say this is the least cumbersome and the most intuitive way of organizing your notes. Uh, you don't have a concept of a folder in Bear application. Everything is organized via tag and nested tags. For example, here I have, uh, as you can see, I added this note to my articles and it was very quick. So if I want to, let's say, move this to another folder then I can just delete this tag and put it in a separate tag, say double A one. And then it will create a folder concept for me here, which is the name of the hashtag. And if I want to create another note under AA, I will just com command N and then give it a title, note two, and then another one is created. So let's say I don't want this note to be here. I want it to be a subfolder of AA1 or sub hashtag of this. Then I will just create a nested, nested hashtag and I'll call AA2, for example. And then when I go back here, I can see this collapsible icon here. And if I press it, I should see my AA2 folder. Other than that, you can change this uh, icon here and the name, of course. So if I want to 
give it a different icon. I can just edit tag and then select among a generous source of icons here. So another powerful feature is wiki links. So I can just open a double square bracket and type the name of the note that I am linking. And if I click on it, I should navigate to the note number two. And if I want to create a link back, I will type note one here, and this is my link back. Wiki links are really powerful when you want to create a dashboard. For example, here under my technical, I have this technical main, which I should also pin it on top. Uh, this is basically everything I need to learn in my career. Uh, I created a dashboard. Each of these are the link to uh, each individual article or notes that I'm writing or capturing from the web. Uh, this is powerful and I think you should use it a lot for each individual uh, main topic that you have. You can create a main dashboard which references all your subcategories and sublink. Next thing and the most important thing is how to make your life easier by using shortcut keys to quickly operate on the notes. I captured this note from their website. Uh, you can search for it. It, it contains all the shortcut keys. I store them as a note and you can pin it also so you can look at it and learn. It teaches you the basic things on how to operate on note, for example. Uh, if it says that if you press command one, two, three, four, five, six, you can create different kind of headings. You can make a text bold by uh, selecting it or pressing command B and then type inside the asterisks. Uh, you can make it italic, underline, strike through. These are basically all the shortcut keys that you're gonna need. Uh, some of the important ones are, uh, for me, is inline code, uh, which is this one, and code block, because I store a lot of code snippets. Uh, you can insert file, for example, by pressing uh, shift command V and then it asks uh, it, it will basically open a window for you to select your file here and add it as an attachment table operations to do's for example you can convert this to do by pressing command and T and then mark it as done by pressing command and dot these are the operation on lists for example dates are important for me for example if you want to take a journal you can press command shift 7 on the title of your journal and this will be your daily note for example you can be sorted by date uh, other controls for uh, selecting text for example command a uh, these are some common shortcuts among all the applications zoom in command plus command minus and command zero for the actual size uh, navigations i can't run through all of this but it's fairly easy i'm going to place a link also in the description if you want to uh, access this and store it for yourself and train on them slowly to get your hands quick and fast it's going to help you a lot in long run for creating and operating on notes and text uh, in a quick way next is basic markdown syntax also going to place a link for this on the description this is very important for you to know. For example, if you don't want to use the uh, command one, two, three for uh, creating headings, uh, Bear still supports the markdown. So if I press uh, hashtag and then a space, then I have a heading one. This is going to be the title. Or if I press, uh, if I put multiple, let's say three, hashtags then it's going to give me a title number three heading number three there are a lot of commands and also syntaxes that you need to learn uh, to completely master the uh, markdown uh, for example here are also the, some do's and don'ts it says that if you want to create a title do not stick your text to the hashtag it should be a space between it because hashtag uh, immediately the text after it creates an, a hashtag here uh, but with the space in between, it creates a title. So I suggest you to run through this as well and master it. Uh, it will come to your help in the long run. So that was it. I hope it was helpful for you. 
stay tuned because I'm going to create new episodes for iPad OS and iOS in the near future and uh, I'll see you in the next one.